The film industry and social media networks are too concentrated and too opaque in their business models. I think cryptocurrency can help solve those two problems. So obviously the focus of this channel is changing a little bit. It used to be that Distant Signal was just going to be for movies that I made, short films, features, web series, and whatnot. But I think I need to expand my channel's focus in order to include something that I'm really fascinated by. Uh, it's cryptocurrencies and how it relates to arts and media and how that can make the industry better, how it's going to transform it, and how we as filmmakers and artists can use this technology to reach out to more people with more honesty and trust and more control over our finances. So I want this to be a place where we can not only discuss movies, but also cryptocurrency. And I want to begin the transformation of this channel by talking about the trouble that I see in the film industry and social media networks and how cryptocurrency can help solve some of the problems that I see. While it's true that there isn't much standing in the way of people being able to pick up a camera to make a movie or turning on a phone to sign up for a Twitter account, both of these industries have grown too concentrated. Uh, practice shady accounting, utilize algorithms that are very opaque. This is going to be an ongoing series exploring how cryptocurrencies have the power to transform both these industries from top down, centralized institutions, to ones where individuals are broadly in control of these systems. Part one, the problem. Film and television industries are very concentrated. Accounting is completely opaque. It's rife with what Hollywood or people outside of Hollywood call creative accounting. According to Wikipedia, Hollywood accounting refers to the opaque accounting methods used by the film, video, and television industry to budget and record profits for film projects. Expenditures can be inflated to reduce or eliminate the reported profit of the project. A Hollywood accounting can make a $450 million movie unprofitable. Here is an amazing glimpse into the dark side of the force that is Hollywood economics. The actor who played Darth Vader still has not received residuals from the 1983 film Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Because the movie, which ranks 15th in US box office history, still has no technical profits. None. Gavin Pallone of Hollywood Reporter, how studios' phony accounting screws everyone, including themselves. So there's quite a bit of precedent in Hollywood to uh, make this accusation that Hollywood has really shady accounting processes. Some of the practices include things like studios on average calculate production overhead by using a figure of around 15% of total production costs. Distribution overhead. Film distributors typically keep 30% of what they receive from movie theaters. Marketing overhead. To determine this number, studios usually charge about 10% of all advertising costs. All the above means of calculating overhead are highly controversial. In short, this method does not, by any rational standard, attempt to adequately trace overhead costs. So instead of looking at a specific problem and determining how much an actual problem will cost, they do a blanket X percentage of the budget. So nobody actually knows how much, whatever they're doing is actually going to cost. And they could say it said 20% of the budget, even if they only spent 15%. It kind of reminds me of that scene in um, Spaceballs when they're combing the desert. What about you guys? We ain't found shit. <laughs> like, that's the face of the accountant who's been in the dungeons of Paramount going over the books, trying to decide what's actually costing what. It is an industry made up of middlemen that get in between the artist and their audience. You have agents, managers, production companies, distributors, sales agents, critics, and then theaters, finally, that are in between the people who want to make their films and the people who want to see the films. It's time to decentralize and disrupt the industry, its accounting practices, distribution, capital formation, and trust. Social media is also heavily concentrated. As of this year, Facebook accounted for 70% of all social network users on the planet. 61% of social media users are on YouTube, 24% are on Instagram, which is really also Facebook. In Future Crimes, Arthur Mark Goodman makes the argument that we largely use screens to interpret the universe for us, meaning our monitors, our phones, we use screens in order to interpret what is going on with the universe. Which begs the question, how can we trust the information we gather from the screens that we interact with? The algorithms of companies like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube that determine which content gets favored, allowed, or deleted is proprietary and secret. Very little in the way of open and direct debate about the algorithms is done between the users of the platform, their creators, and even governments. Because these platforms rely on revenue from advertisers to even exist, it has placed advertisers in a position to control the types of content that you get to see, which in turn influences the conversations we have on these platforms every day. Who is really in control of the dialogue on these platforms? The users? or the founders, or is it the advertisers? 
The relationship is opaque. So far as I know, nobody's audited YouTube's algorithms for determining what gets shown to whom, what gets deleted, what gets flagged, what gets demonetized, none of that. Facebook's sort of the same way. And so these industries require a high degree of trust between the artist and the companies. Combined with the vast power of automation, we are trusting hidden artificial intelligences to interpret the world for us. As an artist, how do you know you and your work are being treated fairly in the marketplace? You don't. You can't unless the code is audited. This is also something I think that blockchains can solve. And now we see that the large news publishers in the European Union are pushing for an internet tax just for linking to their news stories. If it becomes law, <laughs> The governments there are explicit in their desire to force social media companies to delete fair use news media used in independent creators work before it's even published. Say hello to an actual memory hole. It's time to decentralize the conversation, information, audio, and video distribution, and not rely on algorithms of large, secretive companies or bad laws to protect us from uncomfortable ideas and bad content. It's time to put users back in control of where they want their content to be published, free from ideological and monetary overlords. In part two, I'll be exploring how the blockchain, and specifically Steam, is in a position to make both of these industries and platforms not only more transparent and user-controlled, but obsolete. I hope everyone enjoys the new direction this channel is taking. I think cryptocurrencies are really exciting. I love movies, so I thought it would be great to combine them. Check me out on Steam. You can find pre-releases of all of my work there and on Patreon if you sign up as a patron. All my video work will go there first. I'll be streaming to DLive really soon. And uh, I'll be releasing updates on Snoop, the short film I co-directed really soon. Uh, and I hope you guys um, have a great day.